This video is a beginner's guide to Windsor, Ontario. So if you're looking at moving to Windsor, we're going to do like this all-encompassing quick overview of everything. And then I got more videos on my channel that are like are a deeper dive into certain things. But this is just uh, an overview, a beginner's guide for somebody who's thinking about moving to the Windsor area. Okay, so what is Windsor like? How much do houses cost? Is it safe? What neighborhoods are good and bad? Is there stuff to do in Windsor? What's the weather like in Windsor? Okay, so we're going to go over everything. My name is Ryan Kritz. I'm a real estate appraiser in Windsor and I'm a real estate agent. I know all of the things about Windsor and buying and selling property in this area. If you're looking to move to the area or to buy an investment property in Windsor, feel free to reach out. My phone number is on the screen. Also, use the chapters below to jump ahead to different topics about Windsor. Okay, so first off, weather. So Windsor is located right here in Essex County, the southernmost point in Canada. You can, if you don't like the winter, you don't like the north, this is as south as you can get in Windsor, is Essex County. Because of that, the, win the, the, the weather here is, is, is tame, uneventful might be another good word to describe the weather in Windsor. Like, winters are very mild. I, I actually kind of miss winter. I don't even think we really get them anymore. It usually hovers between zero and like six, seven, eight degrees all winter long. Like the other, I'm recording this in uh, right around New Year's and uh, it was like 13 degrees yesterday. All right. Every once in a while, you'll get a day or, or a week below zero, but it, it's not often that that happens. So like this right here, this photo is what winter normally looks like in Windsor, and then every once in a while we'll get a day or so, or we'll get snow, like this, I took this photo because it's significant that we even had snow, uh, and then it usually melts like the next day. So Windsor is actually like on the same like latitude as Northern California, so we're really not that north. In fact, downtown there used to be this skating rink where they would have free outdoor skating all winter long. They don't even do that anymore um, because they can't keep it running. So instead, they're they're relocating it. And they're, they're spending millions of dollars on this cooling system to keep the ice cool from underground because uh, they just can't. Like when it's when it's eight degrees out, like ice isn't going to stick around. In the summer, it gets very humid in Windsor. I actually don't like this part about Win Windsor. Uh, it's humid and it's hot. Like summers, you're, you're hovering between like 28 and like 33 degrees Celsius with the odd day getting up to like 36 and it's terrible, all right? Um, most days, it's like <clears throat> around 31 degrees in July and August. If you're coming from Toronto, the, the weather is going to be similar. There's just going to be less precipitation. Uh, it's going to be like four, five, six degrees warmer, and um, yeah, you're not going to get snow or as much rain down here. Like these screenshots right here, these are from the weather app on my phone. I took these at the same time, the same day. It's usually just like this. Like it's uh, three to six degrees warmer in Windsor than it is in Toronto. Like I said, um, yeah, it's the warmest place in Canada. So if you're keen on being in Canada and you don't like the, win uh, the winter, this is the place for you. So Windsor is also a super multicultural city. And it kind of always has been since like the 1960s when we had a big influx starting with Italian immigration. And since then, Canada has been big on uh, immigration. And let's be honest, most of them. When they come into Canada, they go to Toronto, the GTA, and then they trickle down to other parts of Ontario, and Windsor is a hot spot for them. India, we get a lot of people uh, into Windsor from India. I think a large part of that is due to the University of Windsor, which brings in a lot of Indian students, and then they get degrees, and then they stick around and they work in the Windsor area afterwards. We also have a number of prominent mosques, one right here and one right here in Windsor, so there is a big Muslim and Middle Eastern population as well. We also have many people from Asia, from Romania and other parts of Eastern Europe. Um, where else? Oh, Italian and Greek a lot in, in Windsor. There's people from all over, honestly. It's a very multicultural city here in Windsor. Actually, you know what? So we have this uh, this thing called the, uh, the Carousel of Nations. It's this big week-long festival. And what happens is each uh, country will find a location and they'll set up like this whole event. There'll be music from their culture, there'll be food from their culture, performances from their culture, and all throughout the city, all throughout that week, people will go and stop by different countries' little festivals and just enjoy. Honestly, it's some of the best food you'll get all year long. I've stopped by the Caribbean one, the Romanian one, I've stopped by the, the Scottish, the Italian, the Greek, um, I've stopped by the Indian one before. Honestly, it's actually a really good time and you get a lot of really good food, a lot of really good drinks, and uh, some uh, creative, fun performances and music. It's a lot of fun. Carousel of Nations is what it's called, and it runs every year for a week in the summer. 
Oh, and by the way, because of that 1960s Italian immigration, we now have Erie Street, which is full. Uh, it's Little Italy. It's full of uh, Italian restaurants, and they are delicious. It's some of the best food in the city. Trust me, a lot of good restaurants down there on Erie Street. Also, we have like a million different pizza restaurants, which we'll touch on later in this video. Okay, so let's talk employment and major industries in Windsor, okay? So Windsor has always been a manufacturing town, although less so lately, it, its big thing was the auto industry. So before 2008, when we had that market crash, Windsor had two GM plants, it had a couple Ford plants, and it had, of course, the Chrysler plant. A large percentage of Windsor's population was employed in the auto industry. And what's crazy is even if you weren't employed by one of those companies, you likely had a job with um, a plant that made parts and materials that it supplied to the auto industry. So in some way, you were tied to the auto industry. And then in 2008, all those big automakers went bankrupt, especially GM. General Motors lost nearly $31 billion last year. That's nearly $85 million a day. That means GM lost a staggering $3,700 on every vehicle it sold. GM CEO Rick Wagoner met with the government's new auto task force today, appealing for more loans. So suddenly Windsor had like the highest unemployment in Canada for a little while, and things were not looking good in the Windsor region. It was crazy. I mean, at that time, it was frowned upon if you drove like a foreign car. You know what I mean? If you drove something that wasn't made in Windsor, people looked at you funny because like their spouse and their son and their brothers, they're all losing their jobs. And here you are driving a Hyundai. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But things have changed since then quite significantly. First of all, like, yes, we still um, have the Chrysler plant and a lot of people work there, but we're less reliant than ever on the auto industry. Um, part of that is just because, again, it's still a manufacturing town. But people have branched out and they uh, supply materials and parts for other industries completely separate from the auto industry. Um, also, just in a world of online work, a lot of people move from Toronto and from the GTA, from London, from Guelph, down to this area who just work online in a completely different industry. And they'll live here and bring their dollars into our community while they're getting paid from a company in Kitchener. But even in regards to the auto industry in Windsor, uh, the Chrysler plant has committed to revamping to make electric vehicles. So they're kind of future-proofing that factory. That's not going anywhere for quite a while. They're going to be making electric vehicles right there. Also, um, they're going to be start making electric batteries for electric vehicles in Windsor. A brand new plant is going to be opening up, employing 3,000 people. Other projects that are creating jobs, we got the Gordie Howe International Bridge that's been under construction for quite a while to link another way to link Detroit and Windsor. And then also we have the new mega hospital they will start building in the next couple years, and that's going to bring jobs to build the place, but then also medical jobs after. It's going to be this massive hospital. So I personally believe, like, Windsor's future-proofed. Like, yes, we're kind of entering a recession right now as I'm recording this video, but I think over the long run, Windsor is going to be in really good shape for a long time. Okay, and with that, let's talk about housing costs, because that's probably one of the main things you're curious about if you're thinking about moving to Windsor. I made a video not that long ago going over the cost of housing in Windsor, a little bit more in depth than I'm probably going to do in this video here, so you can check that out if you would like, but let's go over a few things right now. So in Canada, we have a housing shortage. So property in Canada in general is expensive, okay? So that being said, all across Canada, housing prices has ballooned. Windsor has ballooned as well, but we're still way cheaper than pretty much everywhere else in Ontario. The average price in Ontario right now is $829,000, okay? Uh, if you're in Toronto, you know you're over a million for sure. For a single detached home, you're like 1.2 million in Toronto. In Windsor, the average price is sitting right around the $500,000 mark. So you're much cheaper here than you are anywhere else. So something like this in the GTA is $1.1 million. In Windsor, this sold for $480,000. So I'm sure you're aware right now in Canada, like we're going into a recession. So the prices have dropped in Windsor as well. It like the average price was about seven hundred thousand dollars six months ago, and now it's down to like five hundred thousand dollars. That's a big drop. It seems to have leveled out. We'll see what the new year does. But um, that's okay. Actually, that's kind of better for you right now if you're planning to move to Windsor. Because like I said, over the long run, I think housing in Canada and in Windsor especially is going to keep going up. It's going to go back to rising up. So it's better to get the asset that you're buying at a cheaper price now. You'll have a higher interest rate and big monthly payments, but that will change. Your interest rate is temporary, but the price you buy the house at is permanent. That's forever. 
So, so going into 2023, if you can swing it, now is the time to buy a house. This is where people get ahead. When you can buy a house in a recession and then sit there and wait and build equity as the market goes up, if you're planning on buying a house and or maybe you're a first-time home buyer who can't afford in the GTA, like this is your time to purchase in a city like Windsor. So let's just quickly go over a few different stats here, okay? So a house like this, it's a two-story. That's going to cost you anywhere from 800000 up to well over a million, depending on how big the house is and how nice it is inside. A, a raised ranch like this is going to cost you 700000 or a little bit more right now, and it's going to rent for like 3000 to 3500 right now. A house like this is going to cost you around 500000 and it will rent for around 2500 I believe, at the current moment. And a house like this will sell for three fifty. They're not big. It usually only has one bathroom. It'll still rent probably for around two thousand dollars a month. If you need help purchasing a house in Windsor um, or buying an investment property, of course, just reach out to me here. That's my phone number on the screen. I do this for a living. I do this all day, every day. I know what I'm talking about. I can help you out. All right, Windsor University and Windsor University Investment Properties. That's what we're talking about here. Windsor is definitely a university town. Right here on your map is where the University of Windsor is located. Let me tell you something right now. There is not enough rentals in this city for family homes and especially for student rentals. Good money can be made renting out to students, okay? We're going to go over that in a second. So first of all, this area of town is an old area of town. Most houses in this region are around 100 years old, but that's fine. As long as they've upkept the house, a 100-year-old house, there's no problems with, okay? Um, I mean, in Europe, people live in four or 500-year-old homes, all right? So as long as you've updated the, the roof and the windows and, and the electrical and the heating and the cooling throughout the years, which almost everybody has to some degree, uh, it's fine. It's irrelevant, kind of, that it's 100 years old. So you're going to see a lot of houses like this around the university. They're small houses that have been renovated to have as many bedrooms as possible, which is great because the more bedrooms, the more people you can rent out to and the more money you can make off your property. So this house here is located within walking distance to the university, okay? So it's got three bedrooms above grade and two bedrooms in the basement. So a total of five. It's got one and a half bathrooms. This sold recently for about $350,000. Per room, you can probably get like uh, 650 bucks a month. So you're going to get $2,500 or more per month. It, it might be more. Like, I know a guy who's renting, uh, he's putting two students in a room and charging $400 a head. So that guy's making like three, four grand off his rental property. Um, you could do that as well. Uh, like I said, there's a lot of demand right now in Windsor for a place to rent. Just to give you an example, so this one is bigger, obviously. It's got six bedrooms, and it's got three full bathrooms, and it's got a second kitchen, so it's offering a lot more. Now, it's outdated inside, but that's fine. It's kind of expected with a student rental, okay? This sold for a little over $500,000 at the end of 2022. These prices will go up after the recession. I don't have a crystal ball. I don't know what's going to happen. I just feel uncomfortable really just giving you prices right now because this video will last on YouTube for a long time and things will change and then you'll be like, Ryan's lying he's, or he's full of it. I'm not. This is just a snapshot in a period of time. If you want updated pricing, you can always reach out to me. My number's on the screen right there. So the vacancy rate in Windsor is currently 3.5%. At the last time, the CMHC released statistics, okay, which they do at the beginning of every year. So this would have been February of 2022, they told us that. It might actually be lower right now, which is a pretty good vacancy rate. Honestly, rental rates are going to keep going up. So if you're an investor, that's good for you. If you're a renter, I would lock in right now, sign a one-year lease if you're looking soon, because as time goes on, it's just going to keep going up. Again, if you need help purchasing a rental property or something, you can always reach out to me. My number's right there. All right, let's talk about stuff to do in Windsor. You're probably curious about that, because if you're in the GTA, like, that's the center of Canada, right? I'm in Toronto. You, there's everything to do. But there's lots to do in Windsor as well. So we have a ton of uh, major restaurants, like I mentioned before, all down Erie Street that are absolutely amazing. We've got the Capitol Theater, where you can see plays and musicals there. Uh, we also have the Walkerville Theater, where you can see local plays and musicals there. Um, oh, okay, we got Caesars Windsor, where we get major acts. Like, I went to see Bill Burr, the comedian there. Um... They also get stuff like Celine Dion and Michael Buble. In 2023, they're going to host famous comedian Jim Jeffries, rapper Ice Cube, Canadian legends Our Lady Peace, and the Tea Party, 70s bands like Blue Oyster Cult and Blue Rodeo. And, oh, and we also have the WFCU Center, where Jerry Seinfeld has performed before. They have concerts and stuff as well. And that's also where the Windsor Spitfires play hockey. They also have, like, four other gymnasiums and ice rinks and stuff there as well. So there's a lot of local community events that go there. If you play in a hockey league, it'll likely be... 
playing there. It's a relatively new building, too. It's a nice ice rink. Um, or any sort of community events are probably going to be at that, in that gymnasium there. We also have lakes, and that's what's unique about Windsor. Like, the other cities, like London and, and Kitchener and stuff, they don't, they don't have lakes. They're landlocked. People love to fish here. There's some good fishing in Lake St. Clair and, and in the Detroit River. Like, we get the musky run every year, and people pull out massive fish right in front of the downtown Detroit buildings, which is pretty cool. If you're brave, you can go out on Lake Erie and fish, although be careful, because it might be a lake, but it, it's big and acts like an ocean. Heads up. Uh, you can kayak in Windsor. People love kayaking. They, they take day trips out to Pesh Island where there's little waterways you can paddle through. You can stop for lunch at a picnic bench on, a, on that little island and eat. Um, or you can head out into Lake Erie and around the coastline you'll see a lot of birds in Windsor like bald eagles and blue herons. Um, actually, you know what? Like birders, which are people who love birds, like that's a huge tourist attraction down in this county because people will come to Point Pelee National Park and just look for birds. It's usually old people that are like 50 plus. I'm sorry if you're old, but it's true. They call them birders. It's a huge draw in this area. Um, and you can see all sorts of birds. Half the Major League Baseball teams you can spot. You know, the Baltimore Orioles, the Blue Jays, the Cardinals. They're all down here. You can also head out to Peely Island. They got wineries and beaches, and it's just a quiet little spot with a bunch of bed and breakfast that couples like to go to. If golf is more your speed, we got a ton of golf. There's like 22 golf courses in this county. Uh, some of the famous ones are um, Essex Golf and Country Club. is like a premier golf course in Ontario, and as well as Ambassador Golf Course. For kids, there's the uh, Windsor Water Park, which is located downtown right here. We also have a couple of trampoline gyms, which are a lot of fun, even for the parents that are taking your kids there. I've been there before. I'm warning you, you're not in the shape you used to be. It is weirdly exhausting to jump on a trampoline. I'll move on to something else in a minute, but first we got to talk about Detroit. Of course, we are a border town. Detroit is right there, and there's lots to do in Detroit. Major musicians come every single year. In 2023, you can see Metallica. You can see Pink. You can see Luke Bryan, you can see Florida Georgia Line, you can see Luke Combs, and a whole lot more. Also in Detroit, we got sports, man. Right across the border, I know people in Windsor that have season tickets to the Detroit Red Wings. You can go see the Tigers. Actually, opening day for baseball is a big deal in Windsor. People head over the border. They take off work. Nobody goes to work on the first day of the year for the, uh, the Tigers. They just go across the border. Half of Windsor is there, and they watch a ball game. They grab some food, and they enjoy themselves. It's like a, it's a, it's like a holiday <laughs> in Windsor. The city of Windsor even runs buses that'll take you from Windsor to Detroit for major events like that, uh, so you don't even have to drive if you don't want to. And, of course, there's football, too. You got the Detroit Tigers, uh, who suck, so you're not going to see much winning over in Detroit. But you could instead go to college football games. Americans love those. So you could join the Americans and go tailgate at a Michigan Wolverines game if you want. The Fox Theater is also in Detroit. This is an amazing building. It's one of the most beautiful pieces of architecture I've ever seen in my life. A great place to see plays, musicals, musicians, and comedians. Okay, I gotta mention Windsor Pizza, or somebody will comment below and say, how can you talk about Windsor? Do I talk about Windsor Pizza, man? Um, we are known across this country from people that used to live here for having the best pizza in Canada. In fact, Windsor is the pizza capital of Canada. We have more pizza places per capita than anywhere else. Part of the reason is because, as I mentioned before, that Italian immigration in the 1960s, and people just started popping up pizza places all over the place, and they are all delicious. I'm not going to name them all, okay? I will forget them. There's like 30, all right? The chain restaurants like Pizza Hut and Domino's, they don't do as well in Windsor as the local chains do. People love their local pizza places. This right here is a documentary coming out about Windsor Pizza. It's called The Pizza City That You've Never Heard Of. My name is George Kalivas, and I'm here to introduce you to The Pizza City You've Never Heard Of. Hold on, hold on, hold on a second. Talk to me about the shredded pepperoni. The shredded notorious pepperoni. shredded pepperoni. Shredded pepperoni. You know, every pizzeria in the city has it or should have it. Windsor has been exporting pizza to Windsorites. Yes. For years. Because, yeah, because you can't deal with the other stuff. Large super. Large super for my man, George. Life-changing pizza. Life-altering pizza. <laughs> Local pizza places in Windsor have actually delivered pizza across Canada. Because people will live here. They'll get used to it. They'll move away and they'll miss it. So for the Super Bowl, I think one year, they've delivered pizza to BC. They've delivered pizza to Saskatchewan. 
all over this country. I think out east before someone's ordered pizza. Uh, it, it's incredible that people will pay the money to ship a pizza across the country just because they miss Windsor Pizza. Seriously, the pizza is good, and it's a point of pride for Windsor. So that is your 2023 Beginner's Guide. Like I said before, if you want more information on anything, there's lots of other videos on this channel. I suggest you do, like, a deep dive, all right? You you, uh, get a binge session going and start watching some if you're planning to move here. Uh, I go in-depth on pricing and, and what areas to live and what areas suck and what areas are good and all that stuff, okay? If you need help finding a place in Windsor to purchase or an investment property, feel free to reach out. My number is on the screen. I do this for live in. I know more about property in Windsor than anyone else, honestly. Uh, so feel free to give me a call. Thanks for watching, um, and we'll see you next time.